Welcome everyone, and uh, thank you for joining yet another session of the uh, VMware Roundtable. Uh, today we've got a really cool session. We've got a lot of, uh, as you can see, we've got just an absolute ton of, <laughs> of guests, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of a, a roll call uh, down the line. Have everybody just uh, you know introduce themselves, who they are, what they do for a living, and then we're going to be talking about the vSAN assessment, so the virtual SAN assessment service uh, from VMware and kind of the importance of it. Uh, the role it plays, and for that, we have uh, a very special guest uh, from the virtual SAN team here at VMware, um, Mr. Steve Toomey. So, uh, Steve, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself to the nice people. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Steve Toomey. Um, I am a national partner SE for the virtual SAN team. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, my job is to go out and enable partners and customers with vSAN assessment specifically, but also with general vSAN questions and technology overviews. So thank right. you, Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and we also have a couple more uh, VMware folks uh, joining us today. Um, we have uh, Mr. Tom Lusk. Tom is a, uh, is, is, is a, return, um, a return guest or a repeat offender, depending upon how you look at it. Uh, <laughs> I think today he's a repeat offender. Uh, Tom's been having some uh, microphone or bandwidth issues. So uh, Tom, give everybody a quick shout out. Tell them what you do here and where you are. Oh, hey, thanks a lot, Kevin. Yeah, I had a, uh, I, like, I like to call it a layer nine issue. It was a user error on the uh, <laughs> setting up my Google FaceTime. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, so Tom Lusk, I'm a partner SE, work for VMware. Been here about three years. Enjoy my time. You know, got to know a lot of these guys that I could that, that are on the call with us. Um, VSAN is really exciting. We've been seeing a lot of traction with my partners, and I'm just really excited to you know to, to help discuss this assessment and everything with uh, with everybody here. All right, cool. And then um, we also have um, Pierre and uh, Pierre. I'm I'm not going to attempt to butcher your last name. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty much the sounds uh, pretty much the same as yours, uh, Grotti. So. Oh wow! Okay, cool. <laughs> that should be easy for you. Yeah, uh, Pierre Grotti, I'm a, a commercial SC for Eastern Canada, so Quebec uh, uh, province and uh, the Atlantic area as well. Um, I've been doing that for six months, and then before that, two years, I was uh, cloud management specialist uh, for VMware again. So anything anything related to virtualize uh, was uh, was my specialty. So uh, awesome. I'm really uh, looking forward to that uh, that session on uh, vSAN. We had great successes uh, over here. Um, yeah, great. All right, well, fantastic. Well, we appreciate that, Pierre, and we appreciate you being a first time uh, uh, guest with us. It's it's really cool to you know kind of see the reach of this stuff kind of get bigger. And then we, um, of course, uh, it, it seems to be a little bit of a running uh, thing here, uh, Mr. Ryan. Um, so if if you could uh, give everybody a shout out and, and uh, welcome back. You there, Dan? Yeah. Okay. The, uh, no, I've got bandwidth issues on my side, so this ought to be good. It's probably it's <laughs> it's probably the the fact that you're doing uh, color matching on your shirt in the background. I know, <laughs> right? Look at this. <laughs> that is the most professional looking set out of everyone on this call. Well, welcome <laughs> welcome to my partner. Anyway, yeah. uh, Dan Ryan, systems engineer, been with uh, VMware for seven plus years. Um, and like I mentioned. You know, in previous videos, a lot has changed over the past seven years. Um, gone are the days of just virtualization, and now we're talking about uh, hyperconverged infrastructure. We're talking about uh, you know desktops and mobility, etc. So this session, um, I think, is going to be a, an excellent one. Um, hyperconverged is definitely on uh, people's top of mind, um, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of chatter about it at uh, my partner as well. So yeah. looking forward to this session. Awesome, and thank you for the brilliant segue. Um, actually, we got what we got one more. We got one more uh, uh, first uh, uh, first time caller, uh, first time uh, guest. We have Mr. Brian Escachea. Brian, did I did I kill your last name or did I get it right? No, you got it perfect. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> big so, big wins for the K man. Yeah, I'm a I'm a pre sales engineer as well. I'm with uh, uh, National Partners. I'm in, located in Austin, Texas. And been with VMware for a year. Uh, I kind of support the whole the whole portfolio, portfolio, but uh, really looking to gain traction in vSAN as we're seeing recently in NSX as well. But really trying to get more enablement to the partner SCs for the vSAN assessment, so that when we get more of that um, demand, that's we're readily available to do those. Awesome. 
Well, and this will be a great way to do it. And again, speaking of segues and partners, we have a couple folks from our partner here. We have uh, Mr. David Schwartzstein. David, uh, David joins us from Soft Choice up in uh, up in the Windy City. How's the weather up in Chicago, David? Uh, it's actually pretty nice out uh, today. Uh, you know, uh, a little humid for my taste, but uh, you know, it's uh, better than uh, you know, the oppressive heat or thunderstorms we've been having lately. So yeah, exa exactly. Well, thank you for joining, and 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 David is a uh, is a technical architect uh, with the Soft Choice team. Um, fantastic, and also you have a uh, you have quite a, a Twitter following. What, what's your what's your uh, NSX Twitter handle, Dave? Uh, VMware NSX uh, or, or, or Tech VMware NSX Tech. So we'll, we'll have to we'll, we'll we'll throw that up here for him. So you guys can all make sure to follow Dave for all your questions regarding NSX. And uh, you know, when we talk about NSX, we talk about partners, we talk about vSAN. Then we definitely have to uh, we definitely have to loop in Mr. Scott Mathewson. Uh, Scott. Actually, I've got a little bit of feedback from somebody's mic. So if uh, everyone but Scott can go on mute for a minute. Um, so, uh, Scott, so that's why if you could, um, if, if you could, uh, uh, tell us, you know, kind of, uh, you know, what your role is at soft choice, uh, the importance of virtual SAN inside of, uh, uh you know, for soft choice and kind of where you see this. Cause I know you've got a lot of opinions about things like hyper converged as far as the partner community and the technical <laughs> community and, and kind of who are you and what are you thinking? Yeah, so I appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate you having me participate today. I'm Scott Matthewson. I'm the Software Defined Data Center Lead at SoftChoice. Really long title, but basically I help uh, put together the go-to-market strategies around services for VMware products. So, yeah, we're seeing obviously a ton of traction with customers who are looking at data center transformations. Uh, obviously, we have the typical challenge of, you know, IT trying to maintain you know, the current status and then trying to provide business units within their organizations, you know, much more agility and, and much quicker time to market. So there's this constant stress kind of going on with our customers today where they're looking at ways to, you know, provide much more agility and offerings into the business units and also maintaining uh, their, their cost structures. So that's where we look at a lot of the hyperconvergence on the market and obviously vSAN is, is a really nice thing to look at for our customers who are our big VMware customers because they're looking for ways to provide a much much better cost to the business and much better agility and options um, as far as uh, giving different types of storage types, um, you know, certain projects, et cetera, and, and being able to use vSAN as an option to quickly be able to get things up and running. Uh, it speaks to the agility and scalability uh, that customers are looking for. So we've been doing uh, our own assessments at VMware. We've got quite a few of them that we've done for our customers uh, where we help them look at vSAN as a, as a viable option uh, of, of looking at storage and um, agility in the, in the marketplace. Cool. Well, th thank you, Scott. And um, yep. uh, so the, uh, let's see. <clears throat> so excuse me, and 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 Scott uh, or Tom, I don't know. Um, I don't know if uh, I, I think Scott seemed uh, pretty clear. And actually, I can see all your little chats popping up. That's that's actually fun. This is the first time I've actually seen that. <laughs> it's like uh, bubbles. It's like remember that thing? What was it? Pop up video? Does anybody remember that? It was on VH1 like a long time ago. VH1, yeah. I loved that show, especially <laughs> when they would do like the pop up videos for like the the really cheesy '80s hair bands. Right, it's, edu did. it's educational too. It was. Stuff you don't know. It was, it was, you guys just dated yourselves. Something. <laughs> oh, dude! When they did like you know they do like a pop up video and it had like Brett Michaels and then it would have like a little thing over in the corner and it'd say you know uh, this this hat actually belonged to his girlfriend's daughter or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was it was great stuff. So all the all the younger guys on the call are all just like sitting there scratching their heads like apes right now. But that's okay. Um, so uh, let's let's pass the ball. Uh, actually, I got a, I got something I want to want to do here real quick. So uh, the thing with vSAN, the way I see it is this: um, vSAN, when it came out, it was promoted and kind of framed as this remarkably uh, simple technology, right? And and it really is. I mean, I, I remember doing enablement on it, 
and you know, kind of telling everybody, okay, you know, here's the deal. You know, you, you go in, you go into the cluster, you click enable vSAN at, or turn on vSAN, and then you decide whether or not it's going to you know collect all the disks or you know what, what it's going to do. And it was really straightforward. And people went out and demonstrated that, you know, all over the place. And we spoke to it at a very high level as far as you know its its capacity and a propensity for cloud workloads because of you know the read cache and and you know um, uh, the write buffers that it has and 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 it's uh, uh, you know the way it's optimized for read intensive workloads. But just as of the past maybe six months or so, the conversation has really started to get reswizzled around you know vSAN kind of being a, kind of a true representation of hyperconverged infrastructure. And I know Dan. Uh, you, you mentioned that, you know, kind of in your in your intro is all that we're hearing, all that's being said around HCI. And so with it being a cornerstone and a real representation of hyperconverged infrastructure, the first thing I'd like to, you know, we're having this call today to talk about the virtual SAM assessment. So what I'd like to first do is let's uh, kick it off with Steve. Let's talk about the vSAN assessment. And then let's start opening up and kind of raising our hand and asking questions. What do we think is going to be important to know? What do we think um, you, you know we don't understand? And what messages do we really want to get across? And so with that, Steve, um, I'm going to pass the mic uh, over here to you. And if you could just tell us a little bit about the vSAN assessment, if you have anything you know on your screen you'd like to share, please feel free to do so. And just you know, kind of tell us why does it exist? Where does it exist? How do you get started? Um, and uh, you know, kind of maybe any uh, uh, you know any quick guidance as far as um, uh, you know, maybe pitfalls or, or, or thoughts or things that you can give us, kind of oh, you know, unfiltered. That would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely not a problem. Thank you, Kevin. Um, again, my name is Steve Toomey. Um, just a little bit of background about myself is I've been working in the storage industry with partner VARs and with VMware now for about 18, 19 years. Um, and the virtual SAN um, product, when I first saw it, was basically like the little proverbial light bulb coming on. It was a way to drive efficiencies up in the environment, a way to drive cost out of the environment. So it's one of those great tools that comes along once in a while that really just gets your engine revving. It's, it's a tremendous um, asset when I look at it from my perspective. So part of that, however, is to understand where you're coming from so that you can actually get to the correct place. So virtual SAN is very, very fluid. It's very dynamic. But you still need to architect that solution. So the virtual SAN assessment tool is that product, that product that's going to go out into your current environment. It's going to assess what you have from a data store perspective, what you're utilizing from capacities and performance. Look at those virtual machines and pull all of that data together to help you architect that virtual SAN environment for your customer. So I believe I'm sharing out my screen now. You are, yeah. Awesome. The virtual, uh, virtual SAN assessment is actually a virtual appliance that lives in your ESX environment. And once you've loaded that tool, all you do is you point that tool at your virtual centers and it will begin to collect data. And again, it collects this data about your NFS data stores. It collects the data about your, sun, your SAN LUNs, whether they're iSCSI, Fiber Channel, or Fiber Channel over Ethernet, and also about all of the local data stores that your ESX environment might have. So it pulls all of that data together. And with all that data, it also pulls individual virtual machine statistics. So I actually get all of the I.O. Um, particulars for every single virtual machine in your environment. So it pulls all of that together, and then what it does from a logical perspective is it actually gives you a design. It actually gives you uh, an environment that is going to give you the correct sizing for caches, whether read and write. It's going to tell you whether or not your virtual machines will be best on a hybrid array or on an all-flash array, and why. It actually gives you some statistics for that. So it really gives a great scientific output for your vSAN assessment, so for that actual virtual SAN um, architecture. So let me ask a question, Steve, yeah. and, and, and anybody else, if you have a, a question, feel free to jump in. Um, 
So in the past, you know, one of the banes of assessment uh, was always the readout, right? You had you had all of this awesome data, but then the the, the readout is, was where the art form existed. You had to, you know, make sure that you know everything was was being read out accurately, and you had to interpret, and you had to place machines, and and you know decide how you were going to to do that. Um, uh, Scott, Dave, uh, that's, that's probably relatively, um, not dissimilar to, I mean, you guys probably have some experience with that kind of modality, right? I absolutely have and you know, and certainly that's, you know, an issue that we have, uh, I, in some regards, it's nice for us because there's some job security with the fact that we've learned to interpret some of the reports from uh, some of the other assessments, you know. Like when we do the vSphere optimization assessments and, you know, we have to actually turn those charts into something that's digestible yeah. for the client to actually be able to action. But, uh, you know, certainly, you know, uh, there's also a quality of if the output is readily usable and I don't have to spend an hour preparing for my hour-long presentation yeah. on the assessment results and I could jump into actually, you know, trying to sell the solution as opposed to interpreting the results of the assessment and selling the solution. Uh, you know, it, it is nice if the, the output could sort of speak for itself and make it a lot easier to get the message across. Yeah, and I know I know Tom and, and Dan, you guys have done a ton of uh, uh, vSphere optimization assessments. Right, you you've both done a lot of those things, um, and you know, ha have you guys actually seen the VSAN assessment yet? Have you have you done one yet? So uh, I, I can go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> I actually have not run an assessment. Yet. We've actually got a few that are teed up right now, and that was, you know, kind of interesting because when this, you know, when the ask for this call came around, I hadn't done one, and I wanted to learn. So actually, it's very fortuitous. Because now I'm, you know, had to had to brush up on it, you know, look into it a little bit deeper, and you know, I'm getting ready to start them because, like you said, with the the customers not being familiar with it, you know, we want to be able to show this to them easily, and that's what I'm looking forward to is, you know, really, you know, making sure that when we propose a solution to our customers, you know, I'm not going to just say, oh yeah, yeah, you know, three hosts and you know, a couple yeah. solids, it's working and be fun. I want to well, have because that's what everybody's been saying. It. That's what everybody's exactly. been saying. It's like, okay, is it three? Is it four? And you know, uh, you know, should I go hybrid or should I go all flash? And you're just like, I don't know. What can you afford? Yeah, and I think it's really important too, especially with the way the community is, our user community. People get passionate about their storage. Yeah. Right. You know, you know, it's like it's like a pickup guy. Like, I, you know, you could be a Ford or a Chevy guy or something. The same thing with storage, right? I you, thought you were going to go a different direction with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of brand, you know, there's a lot of brand loyalty. I really do believe there is. There's a lot of brand loyalty, you know, you know, with with a customer, you know, with their with their environment, and you, you know, I think that's really important. And it, and it can go both ways because I've talked to a, a lot of customers and. Again, if, if your environment works well, you love your storage, you love your back, yeah. backup products, etc. It's it's easy to jump ship. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the things we really want to be careful with, and that's where the assessment's going to help us. Is again, we're going to make sure we size this <clears throat> solution for the customer. Well, and and I think Steve, that, that that's kind of what you were really saying, and that's kind of what I wanted to come back with is, you know, um, you know, to to my point, it, it's it's really not something where we're sizing it for the customer. The the tool is doing it itself. So this this really marks kind of a, a, a huge leap forward in uh, you know in the assessment paradigm. I think. So I completely concur. I mean, in addition, not only does the tool actually do that. The tool actually provides a great way to build trust with the customer. I'm going to share out a copy of what the tool will actually um, di display. Awesome. But for the customer, um, the customer will actually see their environment parroted back to them. The assessment tool will actually say you have five hosts in the environment, you have 25 virtual machines, and you can actually work with the customers directly and say, hey, Mr. Customer, is this really your data? Is this really your environment? And you can build that trust that not only are you looking at some of the data, but you're actually looking at all the data. You're going to size this environment based on all of the data. 
So, and that's very, very important for building trust. And again, as I hinted at, not only does it give you a tremendous amount of data on how much caching, how much individual um, system requirements that you need, that you require, but it does actually give a breakdown of which virtual machines will actually be accepted, or I should say will fit correctly on that virtual SAN, and which ones don't. So again, the customer can actually see live data for their environment, whether or not it's going to fit on the virtual SAN, which version of virtual SAN as well, but it will give them a great understanding that this environment tool is really going to do the job correctly. And and I think I think Steve that um, you, you know so one of the cool things about these Hangouts is they they get published out and you know customers do see them, and you know so I, I think that's you know kind of a, a, a you know a thought and you you were talking about um, customer trust. And, you know, I think it's, it's not about necessarily just trusting your partner, trusting who, who, who you're working with, but trusting the tool, right? Um, and, and so, you know, if you, if you were to have, um, you know, something that you would say, and, and actually, Brian, I know you and Pierre, you guys both work, you talk to customers directly a lot, don't you guys? Correct, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Pierre, could could you kind of uh, you know give me a quick shout out on kind of you know how you feel about like if if you were to talk to one of your customers directly about the vSAN assessment tool, um, what would you want to underline kind of with so far with what you've heard from Steve? Uh, the fact that it's a it's a all inclusive tool, uh, it gives you uh, a report, a dis descriptive report of um, what what virtual machine is a good. Um, subject for 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 being hosted on vSAN. It gives you the right configuration. It gives you. Um, it's a really easy easy and simple tool to put in place. Um, you get a result really quickly, just in one week. I'm not sure if if it has been told yet, but uh, it's really uh, really quick. And uh, yeah, is that that's, right? Uh, is, it, is it only one week, Steve? Actually, it can be scaled from. Two Two days up to 14. Um, I okay. generally agree. One week is great because it gets not only the daily grind, but it does get all of your weekend batch processing and stuff like that, which sometimes actually can be more than your daily use. So it's very important that one week is a great time frame. Okay, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to yeah. cut you off, Pierre, but you caught me off guard. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, I, I prefer running it for for one week because uh, just two days is not. To, to my preference, it's not enough uh, data. Yeah. I prefer having more, more data than uh, less. Uh, so that, yeah, that's a that's a great tool for for customers to to they, they, they can do uh, they can go on their own as well uh, with that tool. They don't have to be uh, doesn't have to be done uh, um, necessarily uh, uh, by a, a firm a, spe a spe specialized firm on that tool. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's already a, a good tool for them and us, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, that, that brings up another question. I'm going to come back to you in a second, Steve. But um, uh, Scott Matthewson, Scott, you, you can. Uh, uh, I'm going to. I'm going to. I can't unmute you. Sorry. Um, but I, I got a question for you. So one of the <clears throat> things, um, uh, you know, Pierre just mentioned that you know because of the simplicity, because of the directness of the tool, that it doesn't necessarily, you know, um, you know, have to, you know, have like a specialized delivery. Right, the tools becoming smarter. Um, but can you tell me, kind of, from a partner perspective, you know, I, I mean, and I know I, I kind of know the answer to this already, but I'd like to hear you say it, just because I respect you and I like to put you on the spot, and you know that. Uh, <laughs> is you know, what are the additional value adds that uh, you know a partner really is bringing, even when you have a tool that's this sophisticated, right? Because I mean, obviously, um, you know. Uh, uh, a Ferrari on a racetrack will darn near drive itself, but it does so much better when you know someone who knows what they're doing, right, can can get behind the wheel. Um, and and I think that's that's probably kind of the the crux of the answer. But I'd kind of like to hear your um, you, you know your take on on partner importance, especially when you have advanced tools like this. Yeah, and so you know you're right on uh, the, the the assessment itself um, does a great job giving the output and is a selling tool. What we've been able to do is kind of add on in addition to that and say, okay, if a customer actually bought um, vSAN and they liked what it did, um, we help kind of do some uh, what I would call funded enablement. So we help them go in and enable vSAN. We take a look around at the different 
uh, types of um, design considerations that you look at when you do enable it. Um, and then we also look at uh, beyond just enablement, how do you do monitoring aspects of that, right? Mm. So being able to go in and look at vSphere or look at vCenter Operations Manager and look at how not only do you do policy, but how do you do monitoring of how the uh, storage policies are performing and how your SAN health is. So we show them, you know, like the virtual SAN observer. Uh, we show them some of the plugins for, for Be Realized Op uh, Operations Manager and then the virtual SAN health uh, plug-in as well. So we just do some kind of uh, enablement, and these are funded for us. It's a couple hours. It's a sal, no no charge sal. We kind of go in and help uh, some of the, you know kind of further enforce what the output of the assessment tool is by looking a little bit deeper in how do you monitor and make decisions around policies. So yeah. that's kind of an add-on that we do, and that, and that helps really really make sure the product is not becoming shelfware and is actually getting implemented. And questions are being answered on it. Well, and I think that's important because you know, um, you know, you know, as you mentioned, Scott, uh, you, you know, talking about operations, talking about the integrations, and I mean, let's just face it, right? Uh, vSAN for a lot of folks um, isn't necessarily going to become you know the only form of storage they have, right? They're going to use it for certain workloads. They're going to do it for specific things, and they're going to you know start to grow into it and. And, um, you know, it, it's like, like virtualization was, right? They're going to target specific things for it first, and then it's going to, you know, kind of grow and expand inside of the environment because of its, its power and its strength. And so it's important, you know, also inside of the partner groups that, um, you know, customers still connect with partners to get those value adds um, to know how they can monitor not only virtual SAN, but also, you know, their, their other, you know, integrated uh, uh, storage platforms and all of that good stuff and, you know, kind of continue to call back and look at these assessments as their environment changes and grows. Um, Steve, I had kind of a, I had a question for you as I was looking at this. This thing bears a striking resemblance to the, uh, to the infrastructure assessment, right, the VIA. Yeah. Um, yeah, yes, it does. And my, my question, you know, having been like an old capacity planner guy from way back, um, what is, what's like the data transfer? What's the process for this tool, right? You said you, you pointed at vCenter. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got an appliance that you're dropping in. You're pointing that at the vCenter. It's going in and it's collecting data. What happens to the data? What's the data flow? What's the security look like? Uh, what's kind of the day-to-day -day for those seven days? So the real situation is that there's two choices that you can make when you set the tool up. You can set the tool up to record all the data and send it to VMware, and it does send it over secure HTTPS uh, transfers. However, you can also assign um, and choose to do an assessment with anonymous data. So what that does is it gives you, the person running the assessment, the checklist, the compare list, virtual machine number one is uh, ST777, for instance. However, when it sends that data to VMware for our analysis, it actually sends it in only anonymous format. So we see literally cluster one and then virtual machine one, virtual machine wow. two, virtual machine three. So it's extremely protected. We don't need to see your data. We do, however, do we do need to see the the actual data so that we can run our analysis and best sizing practices, but we don't need to see your environmental data, your machine names. Gotcha. We do not collect any IP address or any other information from those machines. So you, you could, the, the, would I be wrong uh, in saying that this means that, you know, when you're talking about uh, uh, financial institutions, you know, government application, all of that, that those might be cases where they might want to anonymize that kind of data? 100%. In fact, I've run about 12 assessments now for the federal government and several state governments, and almost always they choose to send anonymous data. So it, it makes it a little bit harder sometimes for me reading the data as the VMware guy, because I'm just sitting there going, well, it looks like Virtual Machine 7 may not be a perfect fit for vSAN yeah. um, in hybrid mode, and then you have to go back to the customer and say, okay, Virtual Machine 7, 7 is, is this machine, yeah. <laughs> So it's like it's like I have no idea what that virtual machine is, but I know it's not a perfect fit for hybrid. Yeah, it's like nicknaming all of your kids and pets and not telling them. <laughs> exactly. You're number four, but I'm not going to tell you that. Yeah, exactly. And then calling them for dinner and screaming at them when they don't show up. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, my mom used to do that. She used to call me Tim. <laughs> 
All right, cool. So, uh, so, so now we kind of know um, why the assessment's there and and how it transfers what it looks like. Steve, what else can you share with us about the VSAN assessment? So several key things about the assessment. Number one, it does utilize VMware best practice. So it's not, again, just a we're going to give 15 disks and we're going to size that out for you based on what your data was. It's actually using, using data that VMware's collected for many, many years yeah. now to best size from a performance and a capacity perspective. So we're not just looking at capacities, we are looking at both I.O. patterns, read-write patterns, but we're also looking at all of the um, timing on that as well. So not just every single virtual machine may have hit 150 IOPS, so you have 100 virtual machines, you need 15,000 IOPS. We're actually looking at the timing in that, so we, when we give you what the max IOPS of your cluster is, it's the time dependent. So at this time it was 15,000 IOPS. Maybe overall it was much less than that under normal circumstances. So again, it's very scientific analysis. It's not just a we're going to pull numbers off of the SSD manufacturers and say you're, you're going to need five SSDs. Very, very much based in VMware best practice, VMware um, knowledge of what their environments look like. So that, that also, and, and I think, um, you know, uh, David, I think that that kind of speaks to what what you were saying about the the readouts and things like that because you know while we have our best practices, uh, there are you know also uh, there's a big demand or there's an endorsement and understanding around tribal knowledge and just kind of you know experience. Um, so, do you have anything to to, to add or, or how do you feel kind of about the you know like Scott said with you know, the additional value add inside of, of the partners and, and what you guys, uh, what you see you'd be able to add on to this vSAN assessment given the, the advanced nature of the tool. I mean, I think there's always a danger whenever you take a single assessment in a vacuum. Um, you know, I think that, you know, the best practices would be, well, I, yes, the vSAN assessment follows the MR best practices, but there has to be a knowledge of you know, what's currently in the environment, you know, maybe pair it with something like a vSphere optimization assessment, you know. You know, we at SoftCoys actually do a data center uh, assessment where, you know, we incorporate not only assessments of the VMware environment, but also, you know, things like, you know, storage, you know, looking at, you know, storage through, uh, you know, engines, you know, that aren't necessarily looking at it from the virtualization angle, but are actually looking at the data from the storage array controller, for example, you know, where, you know, sometimes, you know, data, you know, depending on what angle you're looking at it from or what tool you're using, you may get different data sets. And so I think it's important to really have a 360 degree view of the environment, you know, and also, I mean, really it's understanding, you know, what is the client trying to accomplish from a business standpoint as well as from a technology standpoint. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, just simple things like, you know, making sure that configurations, you know, are ultimately, you know, valid on VMware's hardware compatibility list, you know, taking a look at, you know, how old are those servers that they have. If they're planning on retrofitting vSAN in, you know, would it be more cost effective doing a cost analysis of you know, updating the hardware. I mean, there's so many different angles, mm -hmm. you know, that you have to look at something like this from that uh, I think that, you know, the vSAN assessment is just one tool that helps to validate the configuration is if it's, it shouldn't, you know, a no assessment should ever be, you know, the only opinion you get on how to build out an environment. Gotcha. Well, and, and I think that's, that's a great point. And, um, you know, uh, Steve, to, to come back to you for a second, you know, Dave made, uh, he brought up an interesting point, um, the integration and, you know, integrating this with, you know, other VMware assessments. Um, you know, is there any, any framework around that? Um, does it do it? How does it do it? If it doesn't, will it, uh, you know? So it's a great segue. Um, so the, v, the vSAN assessment tool does actually not stand alone. It actually stands and will forward you over to our total cost of ownership site, the vSAN total cost of ownership. So it will actually populate that site based on the data that it collected out of your environment. Wow. Uh, and, I com and I completely agree. I mean, 
the vSAN assessment is one tool. Um, the data center assessment from uh, SoftChoice specifically is also another tool um, that I've actually seen, and I, I really do like that tool. So I, I agree that you need to take in as much data as you can. But again, in the end, it really gets down to building the trust with the customer, knowing their environment, echoing back that environment to them. So actually, in most cases, they understand their own environment, mm -hmm. and then moving forward. And that's where, again, going from the virtual SAN assessment tool and having it populate the data in the TCO website is a great way to build that customer trust because that website's public, publicly available. Customers can go there. So we can actually turn the customer to the TCO website with their own data and allow them to start looking at some of the financial, some of the business impact. So not only designing an accurate environment, but allowing them to do TCO comparisons with a SAN, an all-flash SAN array, for instance, or a direct HCI competitor. And so it's a very, very fluid tool. And they could theoretically mesh that data in from a financial perspective with you know evaluations that they're doing for things like for like NSX and, and everything else, and they can make some pretty broad sweeping decisions. 100%. I mean, the, the tool itself, the TCO tool, can be very, very useful to help with the financials. Um, very, very helpful when you're looking at server consolidations, not only vSAN, but also NSX, networking, and stuff like that. Cool. So, I have, I have uh, a question. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. I was actually going to pass you the ball, so go ahead. How, how often do customers uh, follow up with the TCO tool after having run the vSAN assessment? So in my experience, and again, this is them talking back to me, it's about a 20, 25%. So about a quarter okay. of them, maybe a fifth to a quarter. Um, again, I don't know if they don't call me back. Um, right. I don't know. But I've got a lot of customers that call me back and say, hey, I was running through the tool and I ran into this. And then I'm back engaged with them again. Yeah. And where where's the big aha moment, the revelation to the customer in running the vSAN assessment after a week goes by, collecting that data with the VOA, for instance, you, you can run out of the box a report to show all your over-provisioned VMs and mm -hmm. this and that. Where's, the, where's that moment for the customer with the vSAN assessment? Most of the time, the, the big aha moment is when you actually get to an actual architecture. You've designed seven or eight or nine hosts, and all of a sudden they realize that, wait a minute, eight hosts is a quarter of a rack. My current data center is at three or four or five racks in size. Um, that's the big aha moment because they're, they're looking, they remember the physical world. They remember before VMware and they had 10, 15, 20 racks of hardware and storage and stuff like that. VMware came along and now we're down to four and five. Yeah. vSAN's coming along, hyperconverged is coming along and we're driving that down even further. So that's so a big aha for them. I, that's awesome. So for SMB customers, is there kind of a threshold, a sweet spot that you see the most value coming out with the vSAN assessment of, of like how many hosts they have in their environment right now to where, okay, we should run this assessment to see if this is a good use case for you? I think it's actually a... I'm going to say from a data perspective, it's valuable data no matter what the size of customer is. Um, SMB all the way all, all the way up to the enterprise, enterprise select customers. Um, I've actually run this on customers with 2,000 virtual machines in fairly large environments. It gives a great picture of their data. Um, however, from an SMB market perspective, the tool is going to allow you to correctly size a new environment. So usually SMB, you're looking at their, they have five, maybe six hosts at the most. I can tell you, I mean, anybody can do the math today. I'm looking at, you know, 12 core CPUs. You're looking at three hosts or four right. hosts. Mm -hmm. But to really see that presented well from the TCO tool, from the actual assessment tool, and verification that everything that you have will exist on three hosts of, quote-unquote, today's CPUs with today's RAM, with today's either all-flash or hybrid technology, is a big... So that's a very, very cool validation that they went the right direction in the first place. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. That, that, and Brian, those were, those were actually really awesome questions. Um, so, uh, uh, Dan, you've been kind of quiet over there. So, you, you know, um, A, do you have any questions or, or thoughts around this? B, have you done a vSAN assessment yet? And C, um, you know, 
have, you know, what are your thoughts as far as, you know, what your partner's seeing and, um, you know, kind of the, the importance of, of these tools as they advance? That's a lot of questions, Kevin. I'm good for that. <laughs> it's what I do. So the thing is, is that uh, I think we we pretty much beaten, you know, the point to death is that uh, customers, when you introduce a new technology or a new architecture, they need some hand-holding throughout the whole process. Um, when you give them the tools, uh, they're still a little bit unsure as to where they need to go and how they need to architect the whole thing out. Uh, we ran into this, you know, with uh, vSphere itself. You know, it's a game-changing architecture. Um, so customers are a little apprehensive, and they really don't know how uh, this architecture is actually going to fit within their own environment. So what the assessment does is allows them to actually just take that information, uh, have a little hand-holding, and this is how you're going to architect out your, your infrastructure and make it, you know, give them a blueprint as to what needs to happen and just basically dumb it down for them to actually implement this stuff. Um, same thing for, you know, other technologies, uh, end user computing, NSX, you know, we come out with these game changing, uh, you know, infrastructure technologies and it's hard for customers to adopt because they just simply don't know. So the assessments and all the things that we're doing with this, uh, with this architecture, allows them to actually go out and implement stuff. I personally, I have not done a, an assessment. Um, my partner basically has a whole team that actually does these things 24-7. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so they've built out this whole practice because they see the value and what that brings to the customer. Um, and they you know, keep asking us for more funding for it and bringing on more people because they see the value in it. And customers are seeing the value as well, and they're they're quite busy with doing a, a ton of assessments. Well, and I th and I think that that um, you know that speaks to Scott your point, Dave your point that you know even as advanced as the tool is, uh, there's still the human factor, right, Dave? As you called it, the job security uh, <laughs> that, that says, well, I mean, because at the end of the day, engineering is, um, and I've always I've always kind of argued this, it, it is more art than science. Right. Um, and 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 you you can you can apply a, a stock answer to things, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the answer that's going to fit. Um, and and I, I roundly kind of disagree with the idea of, of saying I know what I'm going to recommend before I walk in. Right. Um, I used to be a field uh, uh, you know, engineer years back and, and that always kind of drove me nuts with some of my, co my cohorts. And it's like, no, you, you shouldn't know what you're going to recommend before you walk in. I mean, you, you should obviously know the things that you're comfortable in talking about. But, you know, the conversation and, you know, what the, the customer's needs and what the workload's needs are, uh, those have to be, you know, paramount, um, you know, to, to what you're doing. And it sounds like this tool does that. Um, it, it also sounds, you know, Dan, you, you talked about um, the concept of shelfware. And, you know, for, for people that aren't familiar with, with that term, you know, basically the idea is, you know, it's stuff, it's stuff you buy that then just sits on the shelf, right? Because it, it sounded good, it, 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 it was awesome, but you don't, you don't really know how to implement it. Um, and I, I think that really, uh, you know, any technology has to be applied prescriptively. You know, you don't go to a doctor and go, Hey doc, I don't feel good. He says, well, here, take some of this. He, you go, uh, how much did I take? He says, I don't know. Just keep taking it till you feel better. Um, I mean, there would literally be bodies everywhere. And that's, that's, uh, that's unfortunate because that's the way people see a lot of technology. It's like, okay, well, I got this great thing. I'm just going to keep throwing it at it or I'm going to just kind of, you know, toss it in there and see what happens. Um, but with the vSAN assessment tool that Steve's been talking to us about, you know, it's, it's a much different picture. Um, and it allows us to kind of take a prescriptive approach. It's just so cool that it's now a prescriptive approach that is advanced enough to actually almost diagnose and prescribe on its own, and then we get to determine, you know, kind of how how the pill is is colored and delivered, <laughs> whether we do liquid or, or you know pill form. Uh, well, Kevin, I I, I would uh, say that, you know, I I, I kind of half agree with you. I you know, I mean, I'm a VMware specialist, and of course, you know, I'm always going to walk in with the idea of, you know, if I'm selling storage, it's going to be virtual sand. Oh yeah, I yeah, just yeah. Think that I, I I just think that you know you're you know, when you start talking about a tool like vSAN, though, I mean, yes, I'm going in there with the preconception I want to sell virtual SAN, but I think having this tool like 
the VCN assessment really helps me to, it doesn't do me any good to sell the solution, have it fall on its face, and then have that customer go tell 10 other customers that VCN is terrible either. Yeah, so, well, yeah. And, I, and, and that's and, what I like about, you know, a tool like this is, you know, I can go in there with that preconception, but then dial it back if it turns out, well, okay, this might not be the best fit, and I'm going to end up with an unhappy customer one day, and I'm just, you know. Well, I, exactly, and I think that there's a difference, Dave. I think what I was saying, and, and sorry if I, if I misspoke, <laughs> well, I, I, there's, there's a difference between um, uh, preconception and intention, right? You go in with an intention that, that vSAN is the right tool. You go in with an intention that VMware is the right answer, but it, the, the, the preconception is what I was talking about, you know, kind of because that you don't go in going, OK, well, this is exactly how I'm going to recommend this because this is what I do every time. Right. But you go in with the intention that, hey, I hope this works, which is, I think, exactly your point and, and I think really spot on. And that's actually a good um, a good delineation. So thank you. That's a really, really, really good way to, to pair those two uh, concepts out. Um, so we're, we're running kind of long in the tooth. So what Steve. Um, uh, any other thoughts, insight, guidance on the vSAN assessment? You did record for me, and I'm going to include a link to it, a really awesome uh, virtual SAN assessment walkthrough, right, yes. with the demo and all that. And there's going to be a link to that um, so that people want to learn more. You can just click in here, and it will have a link to the other video that Steve did. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, guys, be sure, you know, to, you know, if you have Twitter handles or whatever that you want to, uh, you know, include here today, you know, have people follow you so you can keep people updated with things that you're doing or things that you find out. But any last words on the vSAN assessment? I'm just going to reiterate the vSAN mantra, guys. vSAN is radically simple. The assessment tool itself is actually one of the simplest ones I have used in a while. Um, it gives you scientific data for correct um, building of a vSAN environment. It's an awesome tool that's really going to be great in your little handbag of tools. So it's going to help you a lot build customer trust. It's going to help the customer understand their environment better so they're going to be much more receptive of the solution. And I think that, uh, I, I can't remember who said it. I, I want to say it was maybe Will Rogers who said that uh, you know in, in, any darn fool can make something complicated. It takes a genius to make it simple. Um, and, and I think that, that when you say that and you talk about the simplicity of vSAN, the simplicity of the, the tool, that really uh, resonates with me because I think it speaks to the amount and the, um, the stewardship of our development teams here at VMware in, in the stuff that they're creating. Yeah. So um, uh, real quick, kind of around the horn from our, from our partner, SoftChoice, uh, Scott, um, any, any kind of last words, thoughts, and, and you know, the importance of, of the vSAN assessment, you know, what you see the, um, you know, yourself as a partner kind of doing next, and, and you know, why, uh, um, you know, last thoughts on the call. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, I think we've all talked about the benefits and you know what the customers get out of it. I think David mentioned some really good points. Is you know, as a partner, we want to take this tool and also incorporate you know some of the other things we do around the business alignment, so we understand what the customers' needs are and making sure you know, as David mentioned, it's a great the vSAN is a great fit for them. So certainly, the tool helps that having the partner sort of uh, color or flavor to the uh, assessment as well by understanding. The customer's environment outside of VMware. You know, what is their current storage solutions? What are their current networking solutions? What is their server hardware footprint? You know, those types of things, and bringing in what I would say the rest of the color, you know, around the vSAN assessments, um, so that we can provide much greater value than just the assessment on its own. Uh, so obviously, I think that's important and something that you know is important to VMware and us as a partner as well. Yeah, and, and I think just a, uh, you know, kind of a, a closing thought for me, we're getting ready for VMworld. And uh, sadly, I'm not going to be out there this, week, this year, but, uh, you know, hopefully you guys take some cool pictures of some crazy stuff for me. Just uh, don't post it on social media because what happens in Vegas is supposed to stay in Vegas or at least on private email. <laughs> um, and then, um, <clears throat> but, you know, when we're talking about this, there needs to be, uh, you know, kind of an importance and an underline for having these assessments because obviously with VMworld, we're talking about new announcements, new integrations, all sorts of stuff. So having a really solid footing and understanding how this tool fits in 
and how to um, utilize it as they're planning out the infrastructure and integrating these other tools, I think is also really important. So now is as good a time as any for people to jump in, I think, feet first and, and, and get into this. Um, so uh, Tom, Pierre, uh, Brian, Dan, any, any last words from all of you, fi uh, final thoughts or questions? Um, I'll speak. I, I just want to reiterate what's been said a few times because it, it is vital. I mean, the vSAN assessment tool, it's, it's an awesome piece to put in your arsenal. Again, it's not to stand by itself. You, you, you still need to be that trusted advisor. Um, you need to be able to talk to that customer and understand their environment. You know, and I think doing that, when you do make that connection with the customer and you're talking to them, and you're not just trying to sell them something. I was actually on a vSAN call, I think it was last week, and he was told, the customer was told all of his, I'm going to get a little bit technical for some of the folks out there, and I apologize, they were told all of their VM kernel ports should be on the same network, the same VLAN, so they could all communicate to each other. You know, and when you said that, luckily I wasn't drinking anything. Yeah, I just saw Stephen shaking his head. You know, because I'm like, that, that's, that's like, that's kind of the opposite. That's the, that's the opposite of what you want, you know. And so I didn't sell him anything. I didn't do, you know, I'm not trying to sell him anything. I'm trying to help him. And so when I do that, when I come back later with that assessment tool, you know, if I come back and say, look, hey, Kevin, you know what? Once you get that networking straightened out, let's let's go in now. Let's let's run this assessment tool in your environment and see how things fit. I think it's going to hold e even more than you would have if, you know, right when we got on the phone, I say, Kevin, you should run an assessment. Yeah. Because, you know, it's going to seem like that's, you know, my go-to. But to go back to one of Kevin's questions earlier, you know, when he's talking about the answers, you know, of course, the standard IT answer is it depends, right? It depends on your environment. It depends on your use case. So, like we said, that's you know, not being able to have a preconceived answer is really important because everybody's situation is different. Yeah. So, um, if if any, anybody else have anything else, uh, last minutes to add, last thoughts. No? Thank you. Okay, cool. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you again to everyone. Um, thank you to our, our very special guest, Steve Toomey. Um, and, and thanks to uh, both Scott and, and, and David for taking the time to, to join us from Atlanta and, and Chicago, uh, respectively. Scott, you're still in Atlanta today, right? Yes, sir. I am. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, I can tell because it will take your sweat. <laughs> <laughs> and and thanks to our you know our our, uh, our return guys uh, Tom Lusk and and Dan Ryan. I hope to see you guys on the next one of these. And thanks, also um, you know a very special shout out to uh, Brian for some awesome questions today. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, it was really really very thoughtful stuff. And um, thank you Pierre for you know being a first time guest. It's it's awesome to have you on here. And uh, we hope to you know have everybody join us again very soon. So uh, until next time, uh, we'll be signing off. And uh, please be sure to follow all these kind folks on, uh, on the Twitter sphere and all that good stuff. And I'm sure they will all have some uh, awesome things to say out at VMworld. So you can keep up to date on the latest uh, news and trends. And then dial back in for another session uh, real soon.